Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, Sahib Allah was the man. Assalamu alaikum. Sayyid. Assalam, everybody. Inshallah. Uh, we'll get started with uh, a Quran citation by Brother Muhammad Saleh. So, uh, Bismillah. Okay. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar Rajeem. Bismillah Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا من أنفسكم أزواجا لتسكنوا إليها وجعل بينكم مودة ورحمة وجعل بينكم مودة ورحمة إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون صدق الله العلي العظيم طهروا قلوبكم بالصلاة على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجه Should I begin? Inshallah, just um, a few few words. Okay. So the English translation, English translation. I'm sorry of this verse. And of his signs is that he created for you, for you mates from your own selves that you may take comfort in them. And he ordained affection and mercy between you. There are indeed signs in that for a people who reflect. Now, alhamdulillah, today we have our guest speaker, Sayyid Muhammad Hashimi from Iran. It's such a blessing to have him. Uh, he's a very learned and a very well-known speaker. And our topic for today is the philosophy of marriage. So inshallah, without any... Without wasting any more of your time, I'd like to invite Sayyid. Bismillah. Assalamu A'udhu billah min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil alameen, bari al-khala'i ga'ajma'in, wa ba'ith al-anbiya'i wal-mursaleen, thumma salatu wa salam على النبي الأمي العربي الهاشمي القرشي العبد المؤيد الرسول المسدد الذي سمي في السماء بأحمد وفي الأرضين بأبي القاسم مصطفى محمد ثم الصلاة والسلام على آله آل الله واللعن الدائم على عدائهم أعداء الله لا قيام يوم الله قال الله تعالى في محكم كتابه عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فاطر السماوات والأرض جعل لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا ومن الأنعام أزواجا يذرأكم فيه ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Respected brothers and sisters from Friday Night Circle of Toronto if I'm not mistaken yeah. and other brothers and sisters who may have participated in this session from other uh, regions of the world. First of all, I have a question, if you don't mind, do we have any married person here? If you can just send me a message. So all of you are single, yeah? Okay. I take it as this, okay. So, inshallah, tonight we're going to talk about the philosophy of marriage in Islam. With this topic, I'm not going to talk about the normal, formal, you know, discussions concerning marriage, about how to pick a good spouse, who would be my best pair, you know, what should I say in the, uh, you know, in, in this that, that proposal day, and uh, how should I treat with my uh, wife or with my husband, okay? I'm not going to talk about those very important issues. 
Those issues are so important. We have to talk about those things. But in this session, I'm going about, I'm going to talk about the philosophy of marriage in Islam. Why marriage is highly recommended, sometimes obligatory in the religion of Islam. You know, you live in the West, you face many Christian people, men and women. You see, you see especially in the Catholic uh, Christianity, that the concept of celibacy is a somehow holy concept. It means that if you want to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you must stay away from women. You must stay away from marriage. You must stay away from sexual intercourse. You must stay away from any interaction regarding the, you know, facing the uh, opposite gender, okay? And it's somehow a means of taking the path of God. But you see, you know, in the contrary, Islam recommends its followers highly to get married. <laughs> get married, get married, get married. What is inside Islam? And you know, because of this concept, Islam is accused with many things. First of all, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then other members of the community of Islam. What is the concept of marriage? What is the concept of being close to the opposite gender under the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Not by any means, okay? First of all, the femininity, you know, being a woman and the concept of woman is in some religions, according to their books, is, you know, somehow a manifestation of deception of evil. You know, in the, uh, in, in, in the uh, book of Genesis, the first chapter of the holy book, when it is going to talk about the creation of the human being, in, in, in that point, you can refer to the holy, you have, I think you have, you have the holy book in your home, okay? Maybe. You see that in, in the book, in Injil, in Torah, you know, the first, first chapter, the Old Testament, Testament it says that, Adam was deceived in the heaven and banished from the heaven. Why? Because of two things. First was the snake, shaitan, the evil. Okay. The second was who? Was Havva, the Eve. He, she deceived Adam and said, okay, we can eat from this fruit and it will be okay and we will be immortal and we will live forever and we, have no, uh, we will have no problem. And trust this snake, he is very trustworthy. We can you know, rely on his word, <laughs> no, yes? And after that, Adam was banished from the heaven. So one of the reasons of this uh, desperation, of this problem of the human being of this anxiety of the human being in this world. And one of the reasons that he is banished from the heaven is women, Havva, as a woman. So woman was always a manifestation of what? Of evil, of deception. Even now in the Hollywood, you can see that. But in Islam, you can never find a trace, a footprint of this concept. You cannot find that. And you can find, you know, concepts really against this kind of worldview and conception about women. You know, we have really amazing narrations. It's, it's just an introduction for our discussion. Why marriage is so important in Islam? What is the philosophy of marriage? Because you see in some other religions, it is somehow a bad thing, an embarrassing thing to get married. It is somehow bowing down to your sexual desires, yes? To get married. Why you get married? So your desires, what, overcome you. You could not resist, so you get married. But in Islam, he says, you, you, you don't need to resist here against your desires. You have to embrace it. 
Okay, we have a beautiful narration from Imam, from Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. It is so beautiful in Al-Kafi from Ishaq ibn Ammar, one of our most authentic uh, narrators from Ahlul Bayt. He says, Qala Abu, Abdullah, Abu Abdullah, you know, when you see the title of Abu Abdullah in narrations without any other title, it is uh, related to Imam al-Sadiq. Yes, we call Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam Abu Abdullah, but in our narrations, we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of narrations from Imam al Sadiq, not from Imam al Hussein. So Abu Abdullah refers to Imam al Sadiq. Imam al Sadiq says what? He says, Min akhlaq al Anbiya. Min akhlaq al Anbiya sallallahu alayhim hubbun nisa. One of the morals, one of the manners and ethics of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was what? Was the love of women. Min akhlaq al-anbiya, even Jesus Christ. This is the, the manners of all the prophets. So we don't care that what, what is written in the holy book, okay? We're talking about Quran, Nahl al-Bayt. Min akhlaq al-anbiya hubbun nisa. And from the manners of the prophets of Allah was what? the love of women and inshallah i will get to that because they are the manifestation of the beauty and mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again from mama sadiq alayhi salam in kafi in al-kafi and umar ibn umar ibn yazid and abi abdullah alayhi salam ma adhunnu beautiful narration ma adhunnu rajulan yazdadu fil imani khayra illa izdada hubban lil nisa I can't find any man, any human being, who, who is elevating and going higher in his faith, except I see him, what? His love for the women is elevating and rising. So there is a relation. The more mu'min you are, the more love you have towards who? Women, and you know, this is the legitimate love. I, I will talk about this, not illegitimate love. That comes from shaitan, not from iman, okay? I'm just talking about the concept of being a woman, concept of, of fem, femininity in Islam. This is not something that you need to hide. No, this is something that you need to shout. This is a beautiful, this is a beautiful reality in this world. And this is why we see marriage as a means of getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not getting far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another narration, you know, there was a man, uh, inshallah, I will get to this narration inshallah later. Okay. So, so the concept of celibacy and the holiness of this concept cannot be found in Islam. Islam recommends us to get married and to look at women, for the men, and to look at women as the manifestation of the mercy and beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for the women to look at men as the persons who can complete their, 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 their religion and their nafs, their selves, okay? So in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recommends us to get married. But the question is, and this is about the philosophy of marriage, why? You know, if you want to, I'm, I'm just looking at this uh, concept from the spiritual standpoint, okay? I'm not going about to talk about the social standpoint or... or or, or other or psycho psychological standpoint. No, a spiritual standpoint. What happens? Because, because you may say that I can stay celibate, I can stay alone, and I can worship Allah and get more concentrated on the reality of this world and on the spirituality. And you know, if you get married, you have another person, his you know, manners. His, his habits, his, you know, or, or her characteristics. It's another person. He or she distracts me from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it happens. You want to go to Dua al-Kumail, the wife, he says, what? 
no, 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 stay with me tonight. Don't go anywhere. You want to, you know, fast tomorrow. Your husband says, no, no, don't, don't, don't fast tomorrow. I want to eat lunch together with you tonight, uh, tomorrow. Okay. You want to do this, there is a obstacle. You want to do that, there's another obstacle. So why is marriage so holy? When this marriage that we are facing today seemingly is an obstacle from getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from worshiping Allah and from doing this and that and this and that. You know why some people see marriage as an obstacle? Because they cannot understand the reality of a spirituality according to Islam. According to Islam, you have to overcome yourself, okay? But it doesn't mean that you need to kill your desires because you can't. Most of people can't do that. The more you try to kill your desire, the, the stronger your desires become and they fight back you know, very harsh and more and stronger than you. And they will later overcome you and they will defeat you. This is what happens with many people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, says that you're a human being. You have a soul, a ruh, and you have a badan, a body. Okay. So your, your body has some needs. Your soul has other needs. You need to satisfy all the needs together. This is the justice. This is al-adl to do so. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I have created this instincts. I have created your desires. Okay. They are not necessarily bad things. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created hunger, created thirst, created the sexual desire many of other desires that we have. And you need to satisfy these desires by what? By divine way, by the way of religion. So we do not kill these desires, but we do and obey the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you obey me, I will get you to the highest levels of spirituality. How? Look at marriage. You know, many people, many people, those like, you know, those in, in India, those jukis, those people who, you know, for years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, they stay away from people. They live in the caves. You know, they don't eat too much. Sometimes they never eat. They raise their hand for 20 years, for 10 years, for 20 years without any movement. You know, this, they're doing this exercises, this riyadat. They do that for what? So they can overcome their self and they can gain and attain more power. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you want more power, which is not an aim in Islam, the aim of Islam is tawheed, not power. But if you want to get more spiritual, and if you want to overcome your nafs yourself, you don't need to go to the caves. You have to tolerate another person. Please, please, bear with me here. You know, sometimes you think that it's harder for you to do what? To... Uh, fast for 30 days, for 60 days, for 90 days. Then to be in society and face people, encounter with other people and do this and do that with the people. In Islam, we don't think so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in Islam and the religion of Islam believes that you have to gain more spirituality within the society. And it is much harder than to be, than, than to stay away from the society and go for yourself. 
You know why? Because you may be able to survive more than 30 days, 60 days, 90 days with fasting. But it's so hard to survive with another person 24 seven with you under the same roof in the home and you have to listen to her or to him and talk to her or him or make her or him happy, yes? It's so hard to tolerate another person. <laughs> And in the same time, you cannot get angry if you, are, if you want to be a Muslim. You must be forgiving. You do not have to take any grudge, okay? It is so hard to do so. So a marriage life is a, you know, big exercise for, for, for any person who seeks spirituality. Because you see, you, you sometimes, you sometimes your husband starts talking nonsense and it happens and it will happen. You know, you will not get to have Amir or Menino people like him. No, this is some, this ordinary people, average people. Okay, this is, this person, this person's that you know. So you will hear that nonsense, but you have to tolerate Demanding nonsense, you have to tolerate. Sometimes insulting you, you have to, I'm not saying that you have to tolerate everything. I'm just saying that in this life, because being 24 seven with other people, it's not easy. Some people are not, you know, I don't, I, I don't know if you have siblings. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's so hard to live with the siblings and living with siblings is much different from living with your wife or with your hus husband. Living with your spouse is so hard if you want to obey the rules of Allah. Yes, if you don't want to obey the rules of Allah, you can you know, get divorced and go and, and, and do anything against your spouse without any problem. But if you want to tolerate, if you want to stay firm and be kind and be happy, and treat the person fairly, that is so hard. It is harder than going to the caves or leaving lonely or fasting for 90 days. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, go and get married. And I know that you <laughs> will go through many trials and turbulences as a human being in the marriage. So yes, you have recited that beautiful verse of Quran in the opening of the session. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts mawadda, the intense love and rahma, the mercy between you two. But you know that this is not everything about marriage. There will be fights, there will be you know, talks, there will be, you know, sometimes big wars. Yeah? If you want to be spiritual, you have to be spiritual in this life, in this kind of life, with another person, with from another background, from another family, even from another continent. It happens today, you know. Maybe for you, you live in Canada, you know, sometimes you see a a sister from Canada marries a brother from Iraq, from Pakistan. Different cultures, different backgrounds, even different languages. And I don't recommend that, but it happens. It's so hard to tolerate that. And you know, in marriage, you have to uh, leave your desires sometimes. What do you love? You have to close your eyes on what you love sometimes. Because if you are, when you're alone in your daddy's home, it's easy always you're asking daddy for this and that, and he will give you this and that, okay? But in the life, this is not like daddy. You have to give something. 
over and over and over again. And sometimes when you give something, you have to do ithar. You have to sacrifice yourself. And that is the reality of a spirituality, to sacrifice yourself. <laughs> so marriage, according to Islam, is one of the strongest means and ways to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why we have, we have beautiful narrations here. I know that many of you may have heard this narration in the when, when they are uh, reciting the khutbah of Aqd on the wedding day. And this is beautiful. Look from Imam, from, yes, in, in Wasa'il al-Shia, and I think in Al-Kafi, yes. From Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. Qala, qala Rasulullah. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam narrates from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Man tazawwaja ahraza nisfa deen. Whoever gets married attains half of his religion or her religion. Half of the religion. Half of the religion can be attained by what? By marriage. And then, قال الكليني في حديث آخر, Shaykh Al-Kulayni, the, uh, the compiler of, of Al-Kafi, he says that I, I, I saw in another relation, in another narration, that Al-Masum says, فَلِيَتَّقِ اللَّهَ فِي النَّسْفِ الْآخَرِ you just need to go and preserve the other half, the rest of your religion, because the first half of, your, of, of the religion is preserved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, by your marriage. It's okay now. Go and preserve the rest of it. This is why marriage is so important in Islam. This is the philosophy of marriage. Sometimes when we want spirituality and when we want al-ma'naviyat and these things, we think that if we have to go and find some weird, you know, sounding book in, you know, a shelf in a abandoned library in some city in the Middle East. So if I can find that book, I will read that and that will, would be the magic of a spirituality. No. Islam is a religion of society, is a religion of the family is a religion of being able to treat with other people in the religion of the ethics of the society social ethics yes most of people who get married they cannot achieve the highest levels of spirituality yes it's true because why because what because they do not know the reality of a spirituality when you do not know something when you do not have have ma'rifa you will not pursue that thing. You will not want that thing. So for you, brothers and sisters, if you want to get those levels, first of all, you have to know Tawheed. You have to know the spirituality. So marriage will help you. Okay? For many people, they don't, they, they, they don't know anything. They're Muslims, but they don't know anything. So this is the reality of marriage in Islam. So marriage is not just about mercy and compassion and love. No. Look at your parents. Look at your relatives. Look at the fights, the problems, the struggles. And that exists. And the best persons, best mu'mineen are those people who see these fights, who go through these trials, but they exit these fights and trials safely without violating the rules of Allah, without hurting other people, without hurting your wife, without hurting your, the feelings of your husband. And really, brothers and sisters of Allah, that's something like a miracle to live with a person for years, for 10 years, for 20 years, for 30 years. To live with a person for 30 years and you do not hurt his or her feelings. Isn't it spirituality? Isn't it riyaza? Isn't it exercise? So look for it, inshallah, Rahman. This is what we need to look for, this kind of marriage.
And I'm not saying that you need to find a person that will fight with you more than others. No. <laughs> fight is not good, is not holy, is not muqaddas, okay? I'm saying that fight will come in this life. Problems, debates will happen because we're not masroom. But the tolerance of people, the reality of people is evaluated by their tolerance. That is important. But yes, of course, when you want to get married, you need to find the closest person that is possible for you, the closest person to Allah that is possible for you. You have to find that. Not just a beautiful person or handsome person, which can really and easily violate the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who will not help you in the path of Allah. But you need to know that if you find a person who recites, who, who, who does the Salatul layl and fasts all the Rajab and Sha'ban and Ramadan and do, does all the Mustahabbat and, 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 and does not miss any obligations, anything, okay? Even if you find that person, you will have debates. You will have fights. You will have struggles. You will have that, you know, situation of hurting feelings. And in that situation, we need to abstain from violating the rules of Allah. And that is a riyadh. That is the reality of a spirituality in Islam. And th this is not all the, the whole thing about the spirituality. You know, you, we can talk hundreds of sessions about the spirituality. Like we talked about the spirituality in Salat in the last Holy month of Ramadan with the Friday night circle of, uh, of Dublin, if I'm not mistaken, yes. You, we need to learn many things, many things, but we have to know that marriage can be an obvious way to Allah, a path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He says that if you obey my orders and my commands, and if you get married like that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, like your, our friend, our brother recited in the uh, beginning of the session, in the 11th uh, verse of the Surah Ashura, or uh, sorry, in the 21st verse of Surah Ar-Rum, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ And one of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is beautiful. You know, what are the signs of Allah? The resurrection, the day of judgment, the skies, the moon, the sun, the earth, okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, one of my signs, and خَلَقَ لَكُم مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created spouses for you, mates for you, from your kind. They are human beings like you. لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So we can find peace and solace with them. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً This is the promise of Allah. That if you get married like this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put mawadda. What is mawadda? In Arabic, we have two terms. Al-hub, mahabba, and mawadda. Hub means love. Mawadda is something higher than love. More intense than love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you what? The mawadda. The highest level of love. And rahma, the mercy. These are the signs for those people who really want to think. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the marriage and the consequence of the marriage is one of the signs of the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. So I think that we have to look at the marriage like this. And I think that would be enough for the this session we can talk about the marriage and responsibility marriage and personality marriage and spirituality more and there are too many issues that we have to address but first of all we need to know that in the way in the path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the path of obedience and submission to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is the role of marriage this session was dedicated to this subject Okay, brothers and sisters, if you have any questions, I will be so happy to hear.
or to read if there is any question on that. So before before any question, I want to ask you to recite salawat together. That was early enlightening lecture. So uh, I guess the first question is um, at the very end, I just missed what you said. You said um, you said marriage is one of the signs of the existence of Allah. Yeah. Right. Okay. And um, if you because yeah, why yeah. Allah subhanahu yeah. wa ta'ala says, Wamin ayatihi. You know, every time he talks about his ayat, his signs, he wants to say that look at the sign and you will get to me. Wamin ayatihi. Go and search Wamin ayatihi, Wamin ayatihi, Wamin ayatihi. In Quran, he talks about different things. One of those things is the marriage and the consequences of the marriage. And there's a question in the chat. Uh, I can I can read it out for you. So yes, I can read. Okay, I, I can read. No oh, problem. Okay. Okay, okay. There's a question. What should we do if our friend is in an abusive marriage? Should we advise them to leave it? You know, it's so hard to talk about the specific case of marriage. You know, we we can know that. First of all, we have to help these people to reconcile, you know, with their spouses. And I know it's so hard, but this is the first thing that this was recommended by Quran. You know, at the end, at, at the end you need to find a hakim from this, the, 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 the relatives of the uh, man and the hakim from the relatives of the woman, and then they get to sit together and they reconcile all their problems. Yes, if there was no solution, yes, talaq, the divorce, is a solution of Allah. This is halal. It's permissible, no problem. But after we tried all the other solutions, because by divorce, what happens? A broken soul, a broken mind comes to the society, be it man or woman. So if it is possible for us as Muslim brother and sister, if it is possible for us, it's good to reconcile if it is possible. Okay. Another question. Um, it's a direct message to me. And it was asked that what should be done in a case where one partner is constantly lying and cheating again and again? I know that, yeah. <sighs> hard case you know even in this case even uh, do you have my video now your video uh stopped stopped because i was going to the direct chat yes i, I do that again you know what uh, as i said it's so hard yes the the, the divorce is one of the solutions but I say that this must be the final solution. So even that person, you know, you say that lies and betrays the family and, and, and do everything against the, uh, the, the masalih of this family. Yes, you have to do whatever in your power to get these two persons closer to each other. But if it's failed, yes, the, the, the divorce is one of the solutions, but I recommend you brothers and sisters, recommend your brothers and sisters, before you get married, before you get married, please, please, please. And in those beginning sessions, when you talk to your spouse, when, when you talk to the person who is coming for the proposal, or when you go to that sister to get married, know each other as much as you can. Look how angry the, is the person is, what is the person's background? What is the person's behavior with his friends or her friends? Look, that is so important. You need to understand. I know it's so hard, but you have to do that. Okay, another question. Uh, uh, yes, 
another question. It's another direct message. Sorry, I don't know why my video is off now. It's it's on in my Zoom. Assalamu uh, alaikum alaykum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How does one prepare oneself for marriage again after a difficult divorce? Also, how do we know if we are making the right decision in terms of choosing a spouse? Like that feeling exists, what I find someone better. And what a'mal would you suggest to find a righteous person? About the a'mal, one of the famous a'mal to find the, the, the righteous person and the, and the good person for you, inshallah. First of all, first of all, first of all, is to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and freely from your heart ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you the best pair, okay? But one of the most famous and uh, experienced amal is the Salat of uh, Ja'far. Salat of Ja'far, Ja'far al-Tayyar, rahmatullahi alayhi, which can be found in the Mafatih al Janan, is so, so effective. Salat of Ja'far, so effective. Ziyarat al-Ashura, doing nudur for Ahlul Bayt would be, inshallah, so effective. But first of all, as you said, how does one prepare oneself for marriage? You need to take lessons from the last marriage, any one of us. And then think, I, I know it's so hard for a person who had a failed experience. And sometimes divorce is not a failed experience. Sometimes it's, it's an experience, okay? You have to see what happens in the last marriage. Not from your standpoint, because we, all, we, we always blame the other person. We always blame the other person. Look, try to be in the shoes of the other person. What was your problems? When you were blind, you know, find your problems. And then, inshallah, by that, you can find a, inshallah better person for a better life, inshallah rahman Another question is, and it's a public question. When getting to know someone for marriage, I hear two views from Islamic scholars. Some say that one week is all you need after doing research through an intermediary, while others say you should take your time even if it's up to a year. Yes, I'm with the second opinion, but I don't recommend one year. You know, look, we can't, you know, stipulate a certain time for that. You know, you have to go for this marriage, okay? And try as much as you can to know the person, the characteristics of the person. But sometimes you have to reflect. Why? Because the person may, you know, show other behaviors in a longer period of time. So one week, I think it's so short, <laughs> unless you know the person and the family and the relatives and the friends, and that's crystal clear for you that this Muhammad or that Fatima is really the person who was created for you from heavens now, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts her or him on the earth for you yes and that is that, that can be found that can be understood but in the most cases it is so hard to say that so hard so i think that you need to take your time yeah but one year is so long one year is so long uh, should we get see to get know them better like an engagement Sirat mut'ai, brothers and sisters, is shari'i, is permissible, and uh, as, as, as you know, is permissible by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you can do that, okay? You can do that, but you have to be aware, especially if you are a sister, you're a woman, you need to be cautious. That in Mut'a, you need to be cautious that something bad doesn't happen to you. That cannot be fixed after this period of Mut'a, okay? So Mut'a is a way of knowing each other. And now in Iran, some, some, some families, they do that. When the, 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 that boy and the girl, and they came uh, and 
they want to get married before marriage they say okay one month two months be together like that and that is okay that's permissible but do that when the person is really the person that you want don't make it like a trial or test no 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 that is so dangerous this is the first thing and the second thing especially for the sisters be cautious in the period of muta you know um, stay away from the person you, you don't need to get intimate it was f just for what for knowing each other not doing everything that is so important i know some people that uh, had uh, you know difficult time in the period of mot and after that they they you know became broken sisters and they had problems okay so um, i think that we, you have to observe this to terms and conditions that I said. Do soulmates exist in Islam? In Islam, if by soulmate we need what we far, in Farsi we call ham, Hamzat, your Hamzad or Hamzad, the, the person, I don't know what you really mean. If you mean the person who is look like you and your his face or the manners and everything, I don't know any evidence in Islam. I don't, I don't know any evidence in Islam refers to that. But if you mean that a person, a, 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 a best spouse for me, leaves somewhere on this planet, okay? Yes, yes, yes. As you said, Allah created this person to be your spouse. Again, I don't know any evidence in Islam that Allah created some persons just for you. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. He is... He has the free will over all of us. That is granted. That is okay. But if you mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appointed someone to be your spouse and you have to find the person, no, we don't have that. We have in narrations, if someone came to marry your daughter and he has iman and other characteristics, okay, let them get married. Rasulullah didn't say, no, 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 no. Stay, stay, reflect, stay here, and wait for who? For the soulmate to come. No, there is no soulmate by this definition in Islam. Okay. Another questions? If there is any other question, and if you had, I don't know, more private questions, uh, uh, the the organizer, the sister who organized the session, I, I don't know her name. Our sister has my number, and she can give you the number if you had any other question on that. Okay, brother Komail, if you have any question, I'm here, but and I'm sorry for my video. I don't know what's happening. It's just a big Sayyid Muhammad on the screen. <laughs> Without any video, Alhamdulillah, it's better to not look at my face. Yeah, just, just hear was, uh, my voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah, I mean, it was a really nice session. It was really good, and um, I guess there's no more questions. So um, yeah, I'll close this out with you know um, information on how to contact us for your your, your contact and everything. So um, you know, just to finish off. Um, I've seen quite a few people actually that I guess I I don't know whether they know what FNC is. So just to give a brief like story behind FNC, um, the reason why we're doing this is because the youth in our community, like you noticed how they're drifting away from you know the from, from Islam, from the Imam, even from things like Quran, Namaz, and each other most like uh, which is another big thing we're looking for. Like we're drifting away from each other as well. So our goal yeah. is, you know, to bring the youth together. So inshallah, we can help the amount of our time. And just um, with the permission, say that I want to share a narration from the Holy Prophet So um, it says that Allah's hand, i.e., divine aid, is with the congregation. Yeah. Whenever a string, whenever a string individual deviates, Satan Marshall. snatches him up like a wolf snatches a sheep string from the herd. So. Marshall. This was a narration that I find really impactful on, you know, yeah. knowing the importance of the congregation. 
So inshallah we can unite and gather together through FNC. Inshallah, brother Kumail, brother yes. Kumail, I really need to thank you and all other brothers and sisters who organized this. It's really precious. It's very good. It's valuable. Allah knows. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. When I go to Haram, every time I go there, I I always I uh, remember the these all the Friday nights, okay, all around the world, and all these uh, communities and groups, which uh, are founded by youth like you and other sisters and brothers. That is so valuable. You don't know what a great job you're doing there, you know. In the blood of Kufr, okay. I know, I know you're not you're not now living in Iran or Pakistan or Iraq or Lebanon, okay. It's so hard to preserve your iman there, and all those brothers and sisters who are helping you, I think that is a uh, they, they will be rewarded highly by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala on the day of judgment. And I ask all the brothers and sisters to help this, please, please, please know that this is al amalus salih. This is really the pure deed that will get you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I know that none of you ask for any for, for anything, you know, for that, in front of that. So, inshallah, I hope all of you, inshallah, can uh, hold on to this rope and Allah and do not disunite, inshallah. And I will be a help, inshallah. I don't know how much. I'm help, but inshallah, I will be a help for the brothers and sisters here. Inshallah. Inshallah, you're already helping. You already help so much. Inshallah. So, inshallah. Um, if you'd like to learn, thank you. If you'd like to learn more about us, and if you want uh, the contact of Sayed, uh, please reach out to um, the Instagram page. I'll I'll put the link, or I'll put the the name actually in the chat, and also um, yes. as for the number, as for the number, um, please reach out to this. Uh, page we can provide you the number the contact and the how to reach Sayed if you do not have okay. Instagram if you don't if you do not have Instagram um, just let me know I can say the number over here so uh, thank you all for coming to Zakala Sayed and um, inshallah we'll end just with a quick dua al faraj you know as a remembrance of the Imam and inshallah, inshallah. so بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم سلّي على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم